Good morning. It is such a joy to be with you today. We are so grateful for the opportunity to worship together. If you are visiting with us this morning, a special welcome to you, to the Church of the Redeemer. We're so happy to have you with us, and we'd love to get to know you. So please click on the Contact Redeemer button at the bottom of our homepage, which is redeemer cincy and that's Cincy with a Y, redeemer cincyorg and tell us all about yourself. Following this live worship service, we will gather in our virtual narthex, our, our online coffee hour on Zoom for some fellowship. Please follow the link to join us on our online worship webpage, our Facebook page, and in the description below the video on YouTube. And today, we kick off a new program year with several new offerings, which include children's formation, online gatherings, a newcomer virtual coffee hour after worship, and the first of our second half monthly speaker series. There is much more offered throughout the weeks to come as we focus this fall on going deeper spiritually and in our relationships with each other. Once again, I encourage you to visit our website for a detailed look at ways to be engaged with your church community. An absolute joy and privilege for us to be together and I'm so grateful for it, so let us begin our worship. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Please pray with me. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say the Gloria together. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, because without you we are not able to please you, Mercifully grant that your Holy Spirit may in all things direct and rule our hearts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. Realizing that their father was dead, Joseph's brother said, what if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full for all the wrong that we did to him? So they approached Joseph saying, your father gave us this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of God, of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him and said, we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people, as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. The word of the Lord. The response today comes from Psalm 103. We will read the psalm together. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. 
slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Welcome to those who are weak in faith, but not for the purpose of quarreling over opinions. Some some believe in eating anything, while the weak eat only vegetables. Those who must not despise those who abstain. Those who abstain must not pass judgment on those who eat, for God has welcomed them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? It is before their own Lord that they stand or fall, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than another, while others judge all days to be alike. Let all be fully convinced in their own minds. Those who observe the day, observe it in honor of the Lord. Also, those who eat, eat in honor of the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or we di- whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, so that he might be Lord of both and dead both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or why do you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So then, each of us will be accountable to God. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Lord, Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? As many as seven times? Jesus said to him, Not seven times, but I tell you, Seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle his accounts with his slaves. When he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him. And as he could not pay, his lord ordered him to be sold, together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payment to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii. And seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay me what you owe. Then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, and I will pay you. But he refused. Then he went and threw him into prison until he would pay the debt. And his fellow slaves saw what had happened. They were greatly distressed. And they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. Then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. Open our minds, warm our hearts, but also bend our wills, for we seek to hear your word. Amen. Many of us remember a special friend from our childhood. The person you rode bikes with and chased ice cream trucks with. The person you had your first sleepover with and the one whose family felt like your family. Maybe like adventures were with a sibling, or a cousin, or in later years, a spouse. My person was Samantha. Sam and I met in the first grade and became instantly inseparable. 
We were on the same swim team, in the same Girl Scout troop. She was at every birthday party, and even my extended family knew her from gatherings at our home. Her mother was a devoted Catholic who welcomed their priest for Sunday dinner every week. And her dad was an artist. I remember their home well. It was head to toe decorated only in black and white. From a cowhide rug to a black leather couch, with their Dalmatian puppy and black spotted white cat even matching the ensemble. The only thing of color in the home's decor was her father's art and the laughter of children. We played unceasingly in that home and in the backyard for years as her family grew to feel like an extension of my own. We were together forever. Middle school brought mediocre renditions of Broadway classics at the school plays. Along with the drama of exploring the world of boys, but we stuck together. High school brought exhausting commitments to student council and our co-ed water polo team, but Sam and I were side by side in both. She was my best friend. Somewhere toward the end of our junior year, Sam began, Sam began to experience it, bouts of anxiety and depression. We were young, but both of us had boyfriends we spent way too much time with. And with the help of older siblings of other friends, we drank hard lemonade on the weekends and thought we were pretty cool. Our senior year brought the trauma of losing another close friend of ours in a drunk driving accident. Breakups, aimless wandering around the suburbs, and a distance from our parents who obviously just didn't get it. We both struggled, not on the outside, but on the inside. We confided in one another and took on each other's pain as our own. We were held captive to suffering without hope for freedom from it. Eventually, Sam's depression became unmanageable. She fought incessantly with her mom and younger sister, and we saw less and less of one another. Strangely, I desired being nearer during the depressive states than the manic ones, and I remember many nights of tears and anger. Eventually, hope became so distant that Sam revealed to me that she planned to take her own life. We were 17. Sam was always a woman of her word, and I believed her. For days, I struggled to figure out how I alone could keep her safe. One of the most devastating realities of my life was the certainty, the certainty, that I alone could not do that. I went to her mother first. Once her parents knew, everything changed. We didn't have the freedom to run around town or stay out at all hours of the night. They watched her like a hawk, and weekly counseling appointments became the norm. She no longer spoke to me. She looked the other way when we passed each other in the hallways at school. She avoided me whenever possible, and neither of us frequented our usual spots for fear of being too close. I didn't go to Sunday dinner with the priest at her house anymore, and she didn't come to my house for Thanksgiving that year. The last time she spoke to me involved the words betrayal, hate, 
and a liar. Our 11-year friendship that encompassed all of the life we could remember was over. She would never forgive me. We saw each other once in our early 20s at a wedding of another friend, and I foolishly approached her at the dinner table to say hello. It was clear that the wound still had not healed. She did not want to speak to me, could never forget how I broke her confidences. Forgiveness was not available then. Two years ago, my husband Chris and I flew here to Cincinnati for the weekend to meet some of you. Lee Hardy, Mark Bass, and Jim Vota took me to lunch. Annie Stevens Gleason drove me around town. And Beth Weinwith met me for sushi. Gatherings of mutual discernment that most people would call a job interview. It was early morning as Chris and I approached our departure gate with bagels and coffee in hand. Excited and nervous about a potential move from my hometown to the next chapter of our lives here in Cincinnati. Over at the checkout counter, I saw her. She looked happy. She was dressed for a business trip. Her hair was different, but I would have recognized her from a mile away. I leaned over to Chris. Chris, that's Samantha, my friend I've told you about. Go and say hi, he urged me. I hesitated. But then I thought, what do I have to lose? And we're here in an airport, so there's very little chance that anyone's going to make a big scene. I walked up to her. Hi, Sam. Melanie, hi, how are you? Are you on this flight? We exchanged friendly pleasantries for a few minutes. She told me about her career. I introduced her to Chris at a distance. Turns out we both had sons around the same age. We didn't talk long, but it was the first positive interaction we'd had in 15 years. So I was on cloud nine with even that simple conversation. I thought about her for the entire flight. The weightlessness of the air beneath me matched the weightlessness of my spirit. Years of hardness of heart broke open and a little light got in. I was content with that. We had spoken and she didn't outright hate me anymore, so I figured it couldn't get much better than that. But it did. She, too, must have also replayed our life together on that flight over the Midwest, because there at the baggage claim of the Northern Kentucky Airport, she ran and embraced me, and we melted into puddles of tears in familiar arms. That's what forgiveness feels like. It is literally one of the best feelings I've ever felt in my life. How many times should we forgive? Peter asked Jesus today. As many as seven times. Not seven times, answers Christ, but 77 times. I wonder sometimes if Jesus had a childhood friend that forgave him. I wonder how he knew how heavenly it was to receive embrace after years of separation, anger, sadness, mistrust, and confusion. I wonder how he knew that the only way to see heaven here on earth was to offer forgiveness even to those you felt had betrayed you. Forgive them, Father, 
for they know not what they do. All I really know is that being forgiven must be our wellspring of possibility for offering forgiveness to others. One of our Bible study members this week asked me, why should we forgive? There are many reasons, I think. The one uphold most by Christianity is rooted in disattachment. Offer forgiveness so that the person you forgive no longer has a hold on you. Forgive so that you can let go. Forgive so that they don't own you anymore. Another is restoration of relationship. Sometimes we must swallow our pride and offer forgiveness so that we can be friends again. These moments of forgiveness are often connected to smaller disputes or situations with someone who we are still in close relationship with. I'm always reminded of the prayer in our marriage rite from the Book of Common Prayer. Give them grace when they hurt each other. To recognize and acknowledge their fault. And to seek each other's forgiveness and yours. Turns out this prayer works for more than just married people. But the most compelling reason I can think of, Tom Kirkwood, since you asked, is that we have very few chances in this life to help fellow sojourners experience heaven. And offering forgiveness is one of the most direct ways to bring God to others. We forgive because we have been forgiven. Mercy flows from God to help us heal a broken world. Reconciliation possible even after many years of estrangement. And kindness is amplified when humility and generosity of spirit direct and rule our hearts. Forgiveness may not mean that you are best friends again. That day in the airport, Sam and I parted ways and haven't spoken since. But there was healing and forgiveness. We don't need to see each other for holidays or call each other on the phone. Because forgiveness doesn't always look like that. But I promise, you will know when you see it, and you will feel it when you give it. The gospel today offers us a chance to forgive. Few of us can identify with Joseph, who in Genesis forgave his brothers for selling him into slavery. But many of us should be able to identify with Joseph's brothers as we participate in systems of modern slavery. How heavenly it must have felt to receive that mercy even though they did not deserve it. How wonderful it must have been for Joseph to grant forgiveness even though he could just have left them to starve. Who in your life do you need to offer forgiveness to? Who in your life do you need to seek forgiveness from? Every chance we take to lay pride aside and give to others some of what God has given to us is a chance for us to experience heaven. Forgiveness is not about being deserving. It's about serving. Serving a God who runs to embrace us when we are far off. A God who weeps for us. A God whose loving arm stretched out on the hardwood of the cross says, 
I forgive you. Therefore, if here today you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and the world. God of love, we pray for your church. For Michael, our presiding bishop. Tom, our bishop. For all lay and ordained ministers. And for all who seek you in community of the faithful. Equip us with the compassion and love to carry out your work of reconciliation in the world. God of love, hear our prayers for the church. God of freedom, we pray for our nation and for all the nations of the world, for peace and unity across barriers of language, color, and creed for elected and appointed leaders, that they would serve the common good, inspire all people with courage to speak out against hatred, to actively resist evil, unite the human family in bonds of love. God of freedom, hear our prayers for the world. God of justice, we pray for the earth, your creation entrusted to our care, for the animals and birds, the mountains and oceans, and all parts of your creation that have no voice of their own. Stir up in us a thirst for justice that protects the earth and all its resources, that we may leave to our children's children the legacy of beauty and abundance that you have given us, God of justice, Hear our prayers for the earth. 
God of peace, we pray for this community, for our local leaders, for our schools and markets, for our neighborhoods and workplaces. Kindle in every heart a desire for equality, respect, and opportunity for all. Give us courage to strive for justice and peace among all people, beginning here at home. We give thanks for all those in our parish family who are celebrating their birthdays and anniversaries this week and for all the blessings of this life. God of peace, hear our prayers for this community. God of mercy, we pray for all in any kind of need or trouble, for those whose lives are closely linked with ours and those connected to us as part of the human family, for refugees and prisoners, for the sick and suffering, the lonely and despairing, for those facing violence, for all held down by prejudice or injustice. We pray especially for Anne Steinhardt, David Cook, Barbara Timmerman, Louise Lanuet, the Anne Ryther, Nina Schaefer, Tom Brindenthal, Kirk Hickman, Jackie Browning, Bob Gerwin, and for all those affected by the coronavirus. Awaken in us compassion and humility of spirit as we seek and serve Christ in all persons. God of mercy, hear our prayers prayers for all who are in need. God of grace, we pray for those who have died, for the faithful in every generation who have worked for justice, for prophets who have called us to racial reconciliation, for martyrs who died because of hatred, and for all the communion of saints. We pray especially for Janice Lubin, wife of Gary Lubin. Make us faithful to your call to proclaim your good news by word and example, and bring us at last into the glorious company of the saints in light, God of grace, hear our prayers for those who have died. Hear our prayers, holy God. Breathe your spirit over us and all the earth, that barriers would crumble and division cease. Make us more fully your co-healers of the broken world. Unite us with all people in bonds of love, that the whole earth and all its peoples may be at peace through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry. We humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will, walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
Now the peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones and remain with you always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you.